All righty. How's it going, man? It's been a little bit. Yeah, it's been. Uh, yeah, thank you. Well, roller coaster of emotions past uh, 24 hours or so. Uh, <laughs> <just hit it. laughs> Is that because of football? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I was very happy about the game yesterday. Um, and now just uh, was brought down to 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 the earth uh, or even below that because my mother just told me that our uh, cat well so it, it was their cat mostly at this point but i spent many years uh, around her and two other cats and it looks like um she was the last man standing and uh, now it's her time as well and Shit, man. It, yeah yeah so, sorry for sharing such like weird things on your podcast but it's, it's, it's just so so infuriating i don't know if you have any pets um yeah well I, my parents have a, like a the family dog like i don't have my own personal pet but i've grown up with dogs my whole life so yeah so i mean um i'm, I'm used to so we've always had some pets and I'm, I'm used to that sad moment when when they are going but uh we just had another cat who had some kidney disease or something so she had to be put down. Um, she was old. So, I mean, that that's kind of a silver lining that she was like 14, the other cat. And this one was uh, 13. And uh, but but the same exact thing. And and it's like she just had this thing where she wasn't eating for a couple of days. Um, and she was like, well, I mean, OK, let's not panic. I mean, even us, like we have lots of sicknesses and whatever. It doesn't mean that we have to die from them. And then she had her blood drawn and is the same thing as the other cats. I mean, oh, weird. It's was just it, were they related? No, that that's the that's a crazy thing. I don't even understand how it's possible. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, I'm, I'm like, what was the point of even keeping pets? Like, it's such a. But, but of course, like <laughs> circle of life or whatever, but yeah. just so I mean, pissed. We're all dying too. So I guess what's the point of pointing us? <laughs> uh, that, that's a good point. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> commit suicide here? <laughs> yeah. No. no, that's cool, man. Um, yeah. How, uh, how has the YouTube game been going? Because I know you're, you're kind of like me. You kind of go on like these long breaks from YouTube. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it it hasn't been the case for me for a long time. Um, and then, I don't know, like last year at one point, uh, I I had this longer break. Actually, after that, I think was when I came out with the fifteen percent is the new ten uh, video, which did mm. really well. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't know, like uh, since then, I just had a lot of issues staying consistent, um, and. Yeah, like it, it, it's multifactorial. Part of it was um, just sometimes feeling like I did at the time, kind of um, conflicted over certain videos. Like, is this, a good, is this a good one to put out? Is this not? So I end up kind of procrastinating a little bit. Uh, part of it is just um, editing videos on this, this laptop, which is probably in a worse condition than this poor cat that we have, <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is just an absolute nightmare. So... Yeah, m multiple reasons, but I'm actually hoping I'm going to get a new laptop now. So video editing should be faster on that one. Um, and like all, all other obligations as well. I, I'm also working on a training book, which uh, I'm almost done with now. Uh, been saying that for like a year. I'm kind of like um, Lyle McDonald. He he had this uh, book that was like almost ready for like five years or something. So uh, <laughs> Hope, hope I'm not going to do quite that, but uh, it is actually almost ready. But have, I mean, the proofreading process, which proves to be much more difficult than I thought. So but when I'm done with that, the book is out so that I can like just focus more on making videos because it's not like I don't have any ideas. It's just, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting older and more s senile. So that's why that's why I'm slower. I don't know. <laughs> Um, why, why do you go on breaks is, do you have like, uh, um, well, mostly because this isn't really my like source of income, right? Like money's a big yeah. thing. You gotta be, you gotta be sp spending your time on, on things that generate an income. And, yeah. uh, luckily I'm kind of in a, a spot now where I can dedicate like a, a lot of time to this, this mm -hmm. YouTube, just YouTube channel now and, uh, not have to worry about the money thing. Uh, but that's tough too. Cause it's like, uh, 
if it's your source of income, if you're trying to generate revenue online, that could be a, a tricky thing as well. Then there's people like NH who just like put out an insane amount of videos, but apparently they're not making any money off of it, right? They don't care about the, which kind of blows my mind that some people can like dedicate that much time to something. And yeah. I get, I get that not everything's about the money, but like, holy shit, man, YouTube is no, you got to dedicate a lot of time to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what helps often, but the thing is not always, but often what works for works in NH's favor is that he he really wasn't doing any editing for a while. And and I mean, still he has videos, which is almost like just one take mm -hmm. and just, just talks. So that helps if you can do that. But now I've seen some of his videos and I mean, there's definitely a, quite a bit of work that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So it, like one wouldn't think so. So for example, he had this video of the um, tier list for different uh, muscle groups. And it's like, uh, you know, this, this exercise belongs in the whatever, do you even lift category? This, this <laughs> belongs in the whatever God mode category. It's so good. And, and it seems like, well, it's, it's, it's very rudimentary, wow. like a, a chimpanzee could do this editing. I mean, how much time can that take? But man, I even, I mean, probably, you know, this from editing podcasts, like even that's just a simple conversation, like no fancy bells and whistles even that can take a lot of time so yeah it, it is a very time consuming thing editing stuff mm -hmm. and do you is training like coaching is that your main thing right now is that your main main source of income so no no it's it's well i mean it is it is a significant um so i am i am um reliant on that income to an extent uh which whereas earlier it was really just a, a sidekick but you know over time it has grown mm -hmm. to an extent where i i um put in a significant amount of work and it's it's in, it's also just time that it takes away so at, at this point it's almost like um maybe like 50 50 mm -hmm. but it, it is it is not my sole source of income um you know like i have I have been working at these environmental like organizations before. Um, and that was kind of my, my main thing. And then I was just doing this on the side, then COVID hit. And then kind of like my work hours, like got restructured. So I was doing a lot of remote stuff. Um, and I've had periods where this was pretty much the only thing that I was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and now it's, it's kind of like, kind of like a 50, 50 thing for me. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I still, I don't know if you have any kind of visions about making this your sole income thing. At one point, it was really like the ultimate dream for me. Uh, I don't know, like the longer I'm in this, I, the less sure I am that I would really want that. Um, because, I mean, it, it can drain you, certainly. Um, but I, I definitely have like a couple of benchmarks that I want to hit, not so much income wise, but more so just like the book, I really want to write this book and put put it out there. That was like a dream for me from the get go to do that. So I want to do a couple more of these things. And then I will, I will see if I really want to go like all in into this thing. Mm -hmm. Do you do you feel like for me personally, sometimes I feel like if I'm uh, trying to pursue something, so I'm really into lifting, I obviously love lifting, but there's a part of me that once, like if I were to pursue that, like I worked as a personal trainer for a little bit, but I actually found that I didn't enjoy it. Mm. Um, it's almost like I wasn't a good, just cause you like lifting doesn't make you a good coach, you know? And, yeah. and, and, uh, it could have been just the, the environment I was in, like the structure of the company that I was working for. But in general, sometimes when you make something that you're really passionate about your, your source of income, it can kind of, you know, I guess, uh, make it like drain you in a way that like makes you not even like it anymore. Not that that happened to me, but just, uh, yeah. Like you asked, like if I wanted to make this my main source of income, I mean, I would love to do like to interview people and do podcasts and that'd be my job. That'd be amazing. You know, be like one of that'd be I'm an amazing thing right right now. That'd be something I would definitely push for, but I would only, only do it if I could like maintain my integrity and also offer value because even like i'm i'm an entrepreneur up with other things like i have other businesses that i work on 
And mm -hmm. my, my whole thing is like, I don't want to ever do anything where it's just like extracting value. Like I want to offer value. So yeah. I would, I would feel kind of shitty if I was like, um, I can't remember. I've, I've had this conversation with a few people, but I feel like social media has kind of trained people to be like, Hey, look at me, uh, pay for my thing. This is me, 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 me. Instead of, instead of like, cause a good business is like you offer value and you get value in return, right? That's how the economy should work. That's how like capitalism should work in a good way. Um, yeah. but so, social media is just like, look at me, <laughs> like pay me, like DM me for coaching. And it's very like cookie cutter bullshit that, you know, like, I don't think people need to pay like an outrageous amount of money to get in good shape. Oh yeah. So yeah, for sure. It's kind of hard. Like I wouldn't want to charge someone like five, like, you know, thousands of dollars to work, to work with me. It's, yes. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> I, I agree completely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it, to me. Yeah, you said a couple of things that uh, are, are good top topics of discussion. I, I find the whole conversation around the the money making side of this interesting because, for example, for me, it was a big relief almost when I I said it out loud to myself that I'm OK with never getting to the point where I would be charging, let's say, like a thousand for coaching, because for a while it was almost positioned to me as as the ultimate goal like you should get to that point where you're charging these crazy prices and i i view this as i mean i viewed this as this um as this grand goal which the only thing is preventing me from doing that is just not having that big of a name yet or just not being that good at marketing or whatever but but there was always something in me that just that just said that not like I actually don't think that anybody should do that. Like and, and I don't think it's the right thing to do because, um, you know, it's a great feeling when you charge a certain amount, you feel good about what what you have charged and the person feels good about what they paid. And then, you know, like if when you look into your customers or clients eyes, you feel good about yourself. If I if I charge like a thousand dollars of someone like I would always feel like, man, I just ripped this person off. Like this is a poor guy. He doesn't know, but he really shouldn't have paid this much. So mm -hmm. I, I, I would never want to do that. So that that's that's one thing. Um, and yeah, regarding, um, you know, how making something your source of income changes your your atti attitude towards it. It's yeah, it, it is tough. And I think um, NH talked about this a lot. That it's because it changes your your freedom, like how much of that you have. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to, but people feel that way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, definitely, if you're just doing this as a hobby, you have no, like you can say whatever you want, like you don't need to be afraid of, you know, uh, offending someone who could be a useful contact or, or things like that. And people start becoming more and more like, like the smooth businessman type. And, and that's, that, that is always something that is just making my heart sink when there's a person that I, I used to follow and, and used to love their stuff. And then they start becoming this, uh, like I'm no longer talking to this person. I'm talking to this, yeah, like as if I went to like any kind of like corporate website or I don't know, I'm listening to like BBC News and like some very smooth talking person is sitting there in a suit or whatever. It's like... Um, Honestly, like one of the very few people, uh, I had this combo with a few people, and they agreed who this did not happen to so far is is Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Verdi Schofield. Like, okay, he has not blown up as much as let's say like uh, uh, Jeff Nippard, although Jeff Jeff is also pretty good in this regard. But Jeffrey is like the same like goofy dude on YouTube who seems like just enjoys talking about lifting and. Mm -hmm. Like you almost have to remind yourself that this is a business for him. Like, cause just from his demeanor, you wouldn't be able to tell. So it's very refreshing to see that uh, someone could keep it together this well. And I hope he continues to do so. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it, it has ruined a lot of really fun personas on YouTube for sure. Mm -hmm. I don't One know if you agree. Yeah, for sure. One thing I kind of think about too is, you know, you said you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. I think a way of kind of getting around that, you know, you don't feel good charging a certain amount. Um, I would agree with you. Like, I don't think people need to pay that. Like, like I said, thousands of dollars to learn how to lift. 
But I think what you could do is frame it in a way that, you know, what I, what I really hated about personal training and what I noticed, uh, working as a personal trainer is they don't really like, just from what I kind of saw generally, they don't tr teach people how to become independent in, in the gym. Instead, they want to make you dependent on them, right? Oh, just keep mm -hmm. coming to the training. I'm not really going to teach you why you're doing this, but you need to do this because I know better. Um, and you kind of see that with certain coaches or the industry at large is this reliance. And I hate, I hate being reliant on external entities. I think what you should be doing is like you write a book, you can sell that book for $15. You know, everyone has $15 you learn a bunch of information and then you become independent. You know, you, you, uh, you know, you become responsible or you've learned enough to implement those ideas in the gym and you're like, Oh wow, I'm making progress and I can coach myself. Uh, I think like what we could do or people in general who are like teachers on YouTube is making people self-reliant in the gym and in training and know enough to do their own thing. And I think, uh, I think that's what you, people on YouTube do, right? Like most of what I've learned is through YouTube or audiobooks or whatever. You know, I, I have paid for coaching. Um, I'm working with mm -hmm. Faz right now, actually. Oh, okay. And, uh, and uh, so I've done that as well. And I think that's extremely valuable. But you like books and like kind of like cheap things that you can sell that are cheaper, like a $15 book is going to do so much for that person, offer so much for that va value to that person. And then at that point, if you're marketing to enough people, you know, if a thousand people buy a $15 book or a hundred thousand people buy a $15 book, you know, you become wealthy off that, which is good. You become, you know, you start getting some solid income in plus you're offering a ton of value at a very like, inexpensive uh, rate. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree because, um, so two things, I, I do think that it's it's always good if you ha can have at least like an, an alumni or something or people that you can turn to when you're when you need help like for example i have not been coached by by anyone for for a long time um and i can handle my training just fine for the most part but like every once in a while i will want some extra input from someone so mm -hmm. then it's, it's great that i know people that i can buy a consultation from um, I also have people that so, sometimes I will just like write to with, with a simple question and it's just, I'm going to take like five minutes of their time um, and, and they're kind enough to help me out. So, so that's great if you can have that. Um, and yeah, like I, I think that books are, are good for that. I think, um, so one thing I've been thinking of is that kind of just creating, um, so let's say I'm coaching someone. And, you know, I'm, I'm charging some pretty standard coaching prices, like nothing crazy expensive, but also not not like a trivial amount. Uh, but yeah, like the, the, the amount of value that I provide per unit of time, which would kind of justify that price, like, like that is finite, like that's not going to last forever. Um, and, and after that, I, so far, what I did is that like, eventually I would kind of just like grandfather them. Uh, with, with a price so I would just like okay if, so far you paid this much from now on like this is fine but um, with some people that's great for with, with some people it, it kind of just goes sideways sometimes because maybe for some people it's still too much for other people then maybe they they become like a lot higher maintenance unexpectedly and that is like well okay like uh, that's um, I, I should probably even charge you more than the regular clients at this rate um, so, so maybe so, something like, um, yeah, almost like an alumni thing or like, like a group coaching kind of set up for like a much lower price, like a, so, something like that could work. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I also think that, and I also think that, um, it is also, it's also valuable. I think if someone actually has paid services and what I mean by that is, um, I had this thought about, uh, some people who just do it like pro bono, like they just do videos, educational content, but they don't sell coaching, they don't sell ebooks or whatever. And it seems like, okay, like this person is so generous, like they are just doing people, people a favor. And that's true, of course, for the most part. But I also think that when you're asking 
for for money and you're offering something in return like in a way you're you're offering people the opportunity to basically hold you accountable for your claims or what you're saying like if i do everything for free and i give you some advice or just like like well like i i, sh I think you guys should do this this works great there is like no mm. there there is no uh, pressure on me of, of of any kind like uh if what I'm saying doesn't work or something, I can say, like, well, you know, I was just trying to help. But hey, um, once I'm asking for money, like I really need to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can to help you. Because if it doesn't work, like you will rightfully say, like, hey, dude, like I paid you. Like, what the hell? This this was bullshit. So, so yeah, I, I think that it's good that we ask for money for these things. Um and 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 definitely if I if I can pick between someone who is gonna like help me for a month. I, I would want to pay for that. I don't want someone to do me a favor because then I yeah. would never be sure, you know? Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. Like when you're getting paid for it, you have skin in the game. So you're going to, you're going to give mm -hmm. a shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's interesting, man. Um, yeah. It's definitely something I've kind of like just in the past, you know, I've had quite a few, a few things where you like think you want to think you want to make that your full source of it, like your main source of income or, or your career. And you kind of realize like, I don't know, man, it might, might take the magic away if it becomes something that I rely on. Um, but then yeah, at, the same, at, the, at the same time for me, you know, I stepped away from the podcast cause I was focused on other, uh, other endeavors that I'm not as passionate about, but it was, you know, guaranteed money and I was doing well with it. But then yeah. after after a while, you're like, yeah, but I still want to do the podcast. Like my life feels empty if I'm not engaged in conversations about things that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. you, could, you know, you got to find that balance. And I think a lot of, you know, you go on YouTube and you find a lot of uh, lifting advice. It's pretty easy to learn how to lift on YouTube. But I feel like as men, we don't have a lot of advice, like healthy advice in other domains of life, you know, like how to make money. Um, you have a lot of like one thing that I'm very interested in is like finance as well. And it's kind of like, you know, the fitness space has a lot of bullshit, but the finance space has like an incredible amount of bullshit, like all like the, <laughs> the, the bro influencers and like, it's like, <laughs> that's one yeah. thing. I don't know if yeah. that's any, anything you're into, but I, I, a lot of those yeah. financial gurus are pretty, pretty pathetic. There's a few really good ones, but it's kind of like, the, it's kind of, kind of like the fitness space. You got to weed through the bullshit to get to the good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um. I, I haven't followed finance people so much, but like definitely business people. So like like kind of teaching you how to how to create a business. And it's like I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but in many cases, uh I just had the feeling that okay, like there's no way that these people follow their own advice ever. Like so some of the things that they're saying, it's like so like you just you just cannot imagine someone actually sitting down and doing any of this and like uh, there's also just like in fitness or in personal development like like there are just these cliches that everybody just says because they heard it a lot from from other people and it's like yeah well it seems like it is good advice so we are just gonna keep regurgitating it like in in um in fitness for example like you have to find your niche like like this one specific niche like like that's so and so of course that is good advice and that's what ultimately everybody ends up doing but i don't think any like uh so 90 percent of people let's put it that way i doubt that they ever like sat down it's like okay so what's my niche like what am i passionate about what am i good at it's like okay i'm going to target men between this and that age that are into this and then they like strategically um creating content around that and whatever like like these things happen organically i think for mm -hmm. for most people so like so that that would be just one example but um yeah it's i mean i mean i think business and and finance it's also one of those things like fitness where it's really tough to to promise like concrete results and there are so many variables that play a role in whether you will succeed or not that it's it's very easy to make a claim sell something and if it doesn't happen you you can always find a ton of cop outs like mm -hmm. in I don't know in in can I can I give a specific example but yeah with weight loss for example like that's a great example like uh if if I'm giving you uh some kind of a diet plan and also like in instructions on like how to adjust what if you're not losing weight 
it's it's very easy to to test whether what I'm doing is what what I'm telling you is working or not. Like if in a week you lost a pound, great. If not, and you made the adjustments, then you know something is wrong with what I'm telling you. So mm -hmm. yeah, murky. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's kind of funny. Like our, I feel like we have all this information at our fingertips, but there's so much, so much bullshit to weed through. <laughs> especially yeah. as a as a young man man like like we're with relationships like if you go on youtube and you're like you're having girl problems or something like that you're gonna find some you're gonna find some bad shit on there like i don't mm -hmm. know if you, i don't know if you ever saw any like the red pill content uh so the red pill is the it's like the so, uh so like the red pill like in terms of like dating uh there's a lot of guys like saying like oh this is uh i don't know man like uh rollo tomasi is kind of like the main guy he wrote a book called the rational male and he kind of like breaks down he breaks down his his version of uh female nature and like pretty much just like i was into that stuff for a while and then i was like dude this guy's just making a generation of men just terribly paranoid of women like it was like <laughs> if she if she does this you need to do this and like it was this uh -huh. weird weird like Th theoretical framework about how you should act as a man and if, if a wo woman does this and it's very like yeah it's interesting man there's a whole and there's a bunch of other youtubers that do it and shit like that but like even with when it comes to relationships finance uh so many aspects of life like self-development in general um there's a lot of bullshit out there it's it's hard man it's uh it's kind of a minefield out there <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's um yeah honestly it's so hard like um so actually the the only other kind of uh topic where well okay so i'm looking at videos in microsoft excel like how to do things sometimes um and which is kind of just like a hobby of mine so sometimes i'm looking at videos is um like these uh, singing coaches because uh, I, I like singing a lot but but can't <laughs> um so i'm just like okay like maybe they can teach me some cool stuff and like there are so many of them like oh my god it's it's unbelievable how many like singing coaches or vocal coaches you have on youtube <laughs> and, and like and not only how many of them you have how many of them you have only with over like two hundred thousand subscribers like it's, it's it's unreal and it's um i mean i cannot say that any of them have been particularly helpful to be honest but like it's even I can tell that at least half of them are full of shit. Like uh, it's it's like they're trying to like demonstrate something of like like what happens when you try to sing and and then you know your voice cracks or whatever. And like just the way they are demonstrating things, it's like so. For example, what might happen to you is that you try to sing and then a sound like ah uh, comes out, and I'm like, <laughs> what? Like no, like that that's not what happens. What happens is you try to sing as like, uh, 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 like your voice cracks <laughs> like that. Like, you you don't even know that. My goodness. So um, it's it's basically any field I think which becomes lucrative, and there is like like people have a have a good um, incentive to to try to become content creators and and teachers in that field. It's it's inevitable. Like I, I think. Uh, people like us, like we, we were lucky that relatively early on we stumbled onto some some good sources. So at this point, it seems seems easy. Like uh, man, like why aren't more people in good shape? Why why aren't uh, why why is there so much bullshit? Why do people believe this stuff? But uh, like even in fitness, I can remember back to the times when it, it was just this minefield, and it, and it seemed like no matter what I'm searching for, like there, there are just no no good answers and like everybody disagrees with everybody like like how the hell am i supposed to know so mm. yeah like i'm i'm sure for example in singing i'm sure that the eric helms of the singing coaching world is out there somewhere and the mm -hmm. mike israel and whatever and probably just like in fitness there is a mike israel and then a mike israel who agree on most things but in a couple of the nuances they yeah. disagree so That's it, it would be Go yeah, on. that's that's what you want. Sorry to cut you off there. That's you want you want to find those people in every field. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and it's um, and I mean, you know, um, 
in in fitness we can see how how many things are like still kind of like up in the air and like we are we are not completely sure about those um and and we are looking at like okay what does what does mike israel say um how does that compare to what eric says like we are trying to look at the evidence ourselves so it's not like it's a done deal we understand every single thing but we do understand enough so that we can get by um mm -hmm. but but that also kind of shows you like when you just get into a field freshly and you try to educate yourself a bit like you actually have no idea if now you're looking at the v shred of that field or the air accounts so mm. it's it it is it is scary i mean you know it, it kind of makes sense then why people say that you should like really focus on one area to master don't try to be a jack of all trades because then you become a Tim Ferriss who thinks he's an expert in everything. And then, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. No, <laughs> yeah, dude, I actually used to follow Tim Her Tim Ferriss back in the day. Yeah, me too. And then I and then I read his book, and it was like I put on thirty pounds of mass in like sixteen days working out. Like I can't remember what the actual claim was. And now I'm just looking back on that. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he's a liar. That's what he is. There's yeah. No way that happened. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah, and it and it's terrifying because that's just, like that's literally literally just a fraud. Like, there's no way that happened. That's never happened. Even if you took all the gear in the world, that's not gonna happen. Like everything about it was ridiculous. And I yeah. was just like, oh, it's possible because this extremely successful person who interviews a lot of successful person people know did that. So oh, okay. And then you go and like actually start training, and you're like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, and 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 the thing is that like now for us it's obvious how ridiculous that claim mm -hmm. is. But you know when I was, uh, I don't know how old was I when I first came across that. Uh, I don't know, but 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 I remember not knowing whether that's ridiculous or not. Like uh, I heard all kinds of things, and uh, like there were some dudes on YouTube who talked about even more ridiculous things. So for all yeah. I know, like this, this could have been correct. Uh, plus, like it also coincided with some other, um, in like seemingly intelligent in retrospect, not so much uh, methods like uh, you know Doug McGuff's um, Body by Science. It was like this super slow. Super oh, low dude! Yeah, I was actually just gonna bring that up. I remember that one mm -hmm. where it was like super low volume, but you just do these super slow reps and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking looking back on that, that's ridiculous too. Yeah, yeah, and I remember seeing that video of um, of Doug McGuff at uh, I wanted to say Don because he reminds me a bit of uh, Don Draper from Mad Men. I don't know if you <laughs> know that series, um, but so he was talking about. So he's a very well spoken and also just like a likable, like the way he he speaks, the way he looks, uh, everything about him is is just likable and like um invokes trust i think naturally he has just that kind of charisma and he was like talking about biochemistry and 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 all kinds of stuff plus he's an md so you know it's like you're listening to him and i was like oh wow lucky me like now i know the the truth that i'm i'm this young already came across that like how big of an advantage i have over other people and i ordered his book from from Amazon, like they delivered it to me to the Netherlands. So that's how dedicated I was. <laughs> and yeah, so I thought that was like the real shit. Like looking back, it's no, it's a it's a very intelligent, very well spoken man um, talking about some stuff in a kind of mis misguided way. And then someone like Tim Ferriss, he, yeah, he is either a fraud or he just didn't grow out of that phase that I was in when I was 20 mm -hmm. or however old I was at the time. So, you know, and, and, and it is terrifying when you're listening to Tim Ferriss talking about business and about relationships and about like pharmaceutical exper experiments that he was doing. And then you hear him talking about weight loss and it's like, oh my God, like it's the same very intelligently sounding tone and the same facial expression he's making it sounds just as convincing except now i know he's talking bullshit. so mm -hmm. what does that say about all the other stuff it's yeah very scary there's something i want uh, something i want to touch on uh yeah maybe we take it for granted because like i when i first got into fitness i obviously went through all the bullshit, right like same as you i stumbled on some people that were 
seemed intelligent, but were feeding me bullshit. And I went down some wrong paths and didn't make any progress. And then eventually I found the right people. I, I found the right voices on YouTube or wherever on podcasts. And then I was like, wow, this is what I've been missing. Like, you, you know, you find Dr. Mike, you find, you know, people like you and like other people on YouTube and you're like, okay, these guys are all kind of saying the same thing. You know, that's how you know it's yeah. the truth. Like they're all touching on the same thing. They've all demonstrated success. Like not even just like evidence-based, but experience-based. Like they walk the talk and they are achieving what I want to achieve. Um, and then you get to this point where you're, you know, your knowledge base is, is good. You understand training and, and nutrition to a, a pretty high degree, you know, not perfectly, but there's still some nuances. Maybe you don't understand, but then maybe, yeah. So like for me, I take it, I, uh, take that for granted. And I kind of forget when I first started, I didn't know shit to the point where, you know, I'll be talking to a friend and I try not to be the guy who, uh, you know, comes in well, like, well, I know better. And I should tell you how to, yeah. you know, and they'll be saying stuff like, like, Oh, I, I, uh, this was actually my, my girlfriend's brother. And she was talking to, or he was talking about, you know, Oh, I lost a bunch of weight on carnivore. And I was like, Oh, mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't want to like poo poo that. So I was just like, Oh, cool, man. And he was just like, yeah, I think it was just cause I was just eating meat. And I was like, Oh, it was probably because, uh, well it was because you're in a calorie deficit just cause you know, cut out carbs and other stuff. And he's like, Oh yeah, maybe. And I just wanted to be like, no, no, it, it is because you're in a calorie. <laughs> it's but it's stuff like that. Like he doesn't understand that mechanism because it's just not something he's learned. And I, you know, it's just like simple stuff like that that you're like, well, no, like that's exactly what happened. That's why it happens. And like just understanding that, um, you take that for granted. Then we talk about all these topics, and like most of the people who follow you, or maybe some of the other natural guys on YouTube, um they kind of are at that place too, where they have, you know, they found some good sources of information. They're probably all intermediate lifters. Um, and we don't really think about the guys that are just lost, you know, following like Ryan, mm. Ryan Humiston or like these other people that are just like putting them down the wrong path. Shit. That's not going to actually create results for them. Cause you go into a commercial gym and I don't know about you, but when I go into the commercial gym, I'm just like looking around, like these people look the same year to year they also like do a you just see their pro not that you should go to the gym and be focusing on other people but you know you you see the people kind of training in a weird weird way and they're not really you know they're not really doing things that are that are going to um progress them further and yeah. you, just, you just think to yourself like actually there's like a legion of people that are just following absolute bullshit and maybe we kind of take that for granted like how do we how do we save those people <laughs> and bring I guess one other thing I'll say too is, um, is so that's where I was at. Then I, you know, I've, I'm at this knowledge base now and now I'm getting into finance and now I feel like that guy who's kind of lost in the weeds. Like I feel like that, that person who is having a hard time distinguishing the, the fucking bad actors from people who have genuinely good advice. So that's kind of where I'm at with finance. I'm like, I'm slowly kind of getting to a spot where I'm learning. But now I kind of feel like that in a different field. That's why uh, uh, finance is kind of interesting to me because now I feel like that person who's you know following Athlean X like he's some sort of god. But <laughs> yeah. but in re but in re like in a finance in the financial field, yeah. Like in a, it, it, yeah. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 a great question because um, and, and it is good that you mentioned the finance thing because I was going to say that that's why it's great that we have videos or a video series and books like Eric Helms's a pyramid muscle and strength pyramid series because that's awesome because like that that is like giving you any an idea of not only how certain things work but like like out of those things which ones are the most important which ones are less important so so I think that's that's where like everybody should start almost um and it's also like not trying to like beat you over the head with like super complicated stuff, like like unnecessarily fancy. So that that's great. But then now that you brought up the finance thing, like how would you find that muscle and strength pyramid of the finance world, right? Like um, how how would you stumble onto Eric Helms? Because he was certainly not like the the highest hit on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That that would have been like yeah, like um, actually like Omar Isaf would have been there. So that that's good. But then also. 
Yeah, Scooby. Do you know? Do you know Scooby? Uh, nineteen sixty one. Yeah. So I think Steve Shaw was talking about him. I did look. I I never, I never watched his videos before, but I think I might have checked one out after. I think he's pretty. He doesn't even do YouTube anymore. Uh, not sure. It was. It, it's been a while since I last checked his channel. But uh, yeah, poor guy. Like he, he was one of the, but like real OGs. Like OGs, as in, I remember coming across his stuff in two thousand eight. So oh, wow. Uh, and 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 then he was like the biggest star, I think, on YouTube. And poor guy, like he was a bit, little bit ahead of his time because like he decided to come out uh, with the fact that he's gay, which I think he did just a few years too early. Because now he would oh, have had sure. a lot of support. And at the time, like there was like a lot of hate stuff on his comment section. So oh, wow. poor guy, if he only knew that he only needed to wait a few more years and then yeah. it would, would have been all good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so so yeah, like um, it, it it is difficult. Um, I don't know, like how should we guide them or or how should we help them? I think I think honestly, like this this might be um, one of the few benefits of these debunking videos and these call out videos because on a, otherwise I think it's a pretty like low level type of content. Like it, it's always easy to trash on someone stuff. Like I could I could even take one of Eric Helms's videos and like pick out like the one point in like a twenty minute ramble. Well, ramble like. He has like this, he is like NH. He can just like talk off the top of his head like so well, but I, I could surely find some place where he misspoke or something and shit on that. So like, it's easy to be a critic always. It's so much easier than creating something original, but this is one of the, the few, few benefits of that, that, you know, you can take something, like you can take the bad, bad stuff, react to that, and then basically every time you do that it's almost like it's almost like having a billboard out there like yeah a billboard is like not the is it's not the pinnacle of marketing or it's not um it's maybe it's not the thing that you will be most proud of because like it's a little bit like gimmicky the way it looks and everything but if people see that there's a chance that you will they will also see your more valuable stuff so then you can actually educate them so maybe that's another avenue and yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there is also the thing that um, it's tough, like now that you're getting into this, um, like more and more the fitness world, like you're also looking for new stuff to learn. And um, maybe on your podcast, for example, eventually, like you will naturally want to like venture away to to other topics like i enjoy your talks a lot with you know jeffrey and uh, you know basement bodybuilding and these guys and like you talk about lifting and and these stuff but you know maybe eventually for you it, it won't be enough right like maybe you will want to get, get some person on to talk about like some really nitty-gritty stuff around lifting and that will be good because it keeps you interested but at the same time you like like your podcast those newer episodes will not be like a like a go to resource for people that are freshly into fitness and want to yeah. hear interesting conversations about it and and that's what happens to a lot of content producers so that's the tricky thing like it's um just like with any job in fitness you will have to say the same stuff again and again a lot and people naturally want to keep it interesting for themselves so mm, that's, um, a great, that's a great point yeah, yeah, so Mike Matthews is actually great at, at that uh, mm. muscle for life. Yeah, you for sure. I, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you're like repackaging the base or you're like, you're just because the fundamentals are boring after a while. Like I love like, well, I love the fundamentals because, you know, that's what works. But as a content creator, I guess, you know, just like progressive overload. Eating a calorie surplus if you want to bulk, calorie deficit if you want to lose weight. You just say the same things over and over and over. Um, yeah, I, I like talking about that though. Like even if it is just the basics, um, I actually mm -hmm. don't. I I see what you're saying where you like kind of get to a point where you're trying to learn more and more complex and like getting into the weeds and the nuances, and then eventually you're just like, ah, I just like lifting. <laughs> I'm not gonna get too too intense into the the science stuff. Um, yeah. As far as like keeping. Um, the content in interesting that's a that's a good point um it's hard because you know you want to stay in your lane but i guess that's why a lot of podcasts maybe uh go into other topics but then you don't want to 
I don't know. That's kind of tough too. Cause you don't want to all of a sudden, like if, if your YouTube channel tomorrow, all of a sudden you start talking about like astrophysics or something like way, way out there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like people will be like, Oh, what the hell? I guess like, but you will see a lot of like fi uh, fitness channels that will kind of branch into like, Hey, I'm an expert of getting shredded. So let me tell you how to pick up girls or let me tell you how to do yeah. this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like uh, you, you do see that a lot as well. Yeah. It's yeah. Like um, I was actually talking about that. I asked uh, Brian Borstein on one of our chats, like we have this WhatsApp group and like, we just uh, chat there with uh, Dave and, and Brian. Dave McConey and Brian Borstein and and I asked Brian like so you're you've been doing this coaching stuff for a long time like I'm curious uh, do you plan on uh, anytime soon becoming a, a coach for coaches like a you know like a business coach because so so that that's one of the very standard routes that people go on um, it's like well after coaching for like 20 years and developing this seven figure business I decided that I, I want to share my experience and. <laughs> <laughs> it's always and, like the same yeah well, and, cr and create another seven figure business <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah teaching people now i want <laughs> now i want to create an eight figure business I think the time has come. <laughs> yeah. um yeah and it's it's so this so that's one and the other one is the um, personal development stuff so like i'm seeing that with um what's his name marian uh like the D dutch guy um he he was student aesthetics before and now now he became uh just just marian on on youtube and yeah it was it was kind of weird like it was all fitness at first and and some vlogs thrown in and then he actually had a video where he said that he's gonna disappear for a while like he needs to take some time off because because of his mental health struggles um and then he returned and it like all his videos are like um how to achieve your dreams like like never give up on your passion and, and like like these sorts of stuff so it's like clearly he's hmm. kind kind of going in that um like in, inspirational figure kind of direction and it's i i guess these things are sort of like um a natural extension of fitness because like fitness is sort of like personal of a, a sub category yeah. of personal development basically so it's it's um plus and and actually this is a big issue is that um i think when you have a figure who is talking about you know like so you take someone like me like I, i'm a very flawed person in many many ways i know more about lifting and dieting than the average person for sure but you know like i i've gotten a lot of comments and and feedback from people that were like wow like if if so if i just showed these comments to someone without names like they would not know if they're talking to me or to like an anthony robbins or like brian tracy or some like motivational inspirational figure or elon musk or some highly in incredibly uh, like some revolutionary figure in history or something it's like are they sure they're writing this comment to the right place like <laughs> like who who do they think i am uh, if if they saw me like uh, watching the games on the World Cup and how <laughs> things were breaking around the house, <laughs> then they would not be saying these things. Like, and and yeah. and you know, and and I had to have that combo with some people uh, when they asked me some some questions that like, um, so like how how do you think that people that you look up to in the fitness world like how do you think they are as people like like do you think they never have like low confidence like do you think they are always like walking around with raging libido and a raging boner like if a woman just <laughs> yeah. looks at them or whatever it's like it's like no no like uh, it, it's and and i have had that experience luckily where i very clearly seen like the flawed moments of some of these people that i i worshipped before mm. and that kind of like put things into perspective but but a lot of people actually worship these people like like they think that they're like superhuman um whereas like no it's just like you, there's only so much you can show on camera or like in a 50 minute video so um we are at fault uh is is what i'm trying to say basically uh, like us the viewers because we have that idea mm -hmm. and then yeah i guess that's that's just the nature of being a, a relatively public figure um that 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 you 
at the end of it, do feel justified in, yeah, like I could become a pickup artist, teacher, or a personal development figure or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I was saying. You know, it then it becomes about the the person, you know, like propping up the content creator and everything that that person does is to like, you know, continue that a cycle of uh i like their their uh their listeners idolizing them you know and that that's a that's a very weird thing you know like yeah. oh you worship me so you'll listen to anything i have to say like let's just say you become super successful in fitness youtube and then people idolize you and then you can easily take them yeah now i'm going to give you relationship advice and finance advice and all this shit and people will just eat it up and that's what that's like early on i realized like i got kind of lucky because i used to play in a band and i met a lot of i've met a lot of my heroes you know like i played with some more popular bands that i was super into and when i was younger i was like oh this guy's my hero and then you meet these people and you kind of realize that oh they're kind of scumbags like <laughs> not not everybody but you meet a lot of them and you're like dude this is like not someone i'd want to be and even if they're and I'm not saying like, I'm not saying like, you know, you're a scumbag or Jeffrey's like got some other, yeah. got a drug habit or something back behind the scenes. I'm just <laughs> saying like, in general, like everybody's like imperfect. So you see these people on YouTube in this neatly little packaged um, video or whatever. And you just kind of assume like, oh, I think I know what that person's like. But dude, you have no idea. You don't know what I do for the other, you know hours of my day that i'm not on youtube showing you like this curated version of myself you know yeah yeah and like and i I really don't understand like some people just cannot help themselves like um what was it uh yeah lane norton for example like i don't know how much you you know lane right like you know yeah um, like i just watch i watch his videos i'm not like a super i wouldn't say like i'm a super big fan i mean uh, I, I like yeah, him. Yes. I like him enough, and I like his videos. Sometimes mm-hmm. I think, sometimes I think he can be just a little inflammatory for no reason. But maybe, maybe <laughs> we need, maybe we need that. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I, I, I like his videos. Like he, some of his cool out videos are actually quite funny. So I don't like these types of stuff. But I don't know. Like usually, I have fun watching those, and you know, I, I like his stuff for the most part like i think he's a naturally very good speaker and and like good at what he does but um but i mean it, it really bit him in the ass for example that like he was he was just going so hard on all this like non-fitness related stuff that he like shared about himself and his values and how he looks at things that then when something came out about him like from his personal life like stuff in his marriage and whatever it like really blew back in his face like from the public like much worse than i think it otherwise would have because you know like if i heard about um who who would be a good example let's say like uh uh, like like Jackson Pios, let's say, like you know, this researcher oh, guy. Yeah. I just saw him, like like big dude, or like like Jared Feather, for example, Mike's colleague, or Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. I just see these Jack dudes. Sometimes they speak on a podcast, usually not. Usually just see like lifting videos from them and some like educational posts, and that's it. If I heard that they had an affair or or something. Uh, even some domestic violence or something, I would be like, oh, dude, that that's really bad. Um, I mean, I didn't wouldn't say that to them because <laughs> I don't don't know them. But like, uh, I wouldn't have any kind of feelings about <gasps> it's like, oh, Jared, out of all people, that, that, that's <laughs> terrible. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't yeah. be like devastated because I have no illusions about what he is and isn't like. Like, I, I have no idea what he's like as a person. So. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, but, but with Lane, like, yeah, I knew, like, I have heard him being like very judgmental about others for things in their personal lives. Like, a, a lot of these, um, almost like mo- inspirational posts about himself, like how he goes about things and what he values and whatever. So at the end, it was almost like I don't know, Gandhi committing some like affair or something like that. It's like, oh my God, like, like, uh, how could this person do this despite everything that they said? So, um yeah like i i think you just um you just gotta not forget that at the end of the day you're just you're you're just like a person who happens to be an expert in some field so that 
qualifies you for some things, but not like there's a, an end to that. Like you're mm -hmm. not some holy person, you know? No, those, that, those are all great points, man. That I think just in general, we need to just realize that everyone's a human being and just because they have a platform and a voice on the internet does not make them God, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's really that simple. And it, yeah. it just, you know, like, um, I think there's like a, there's a problem with people putting so much trust in like an authority figure online that they've lost a belief in themselves. You know, like they don't, oh, this guy knows better. Like I'm going to listen to him. So when I was younger and even now I still fall prey to it. I'll listen to someone on YouTube or just online and I'll, I'll listen to them. And it's almost like, oh, I'm becoming like a part, like I'm uh, becoming a collection of all this content I consume. Mm -hmm. Like rather than developing my own unique personality and character, I'm just consuming content and taking like little bits and pieces of these people and becoming them like yeah. a watered down version of them. And that's, that's a problem. And as I get older, I'm, I'm, I'm more like, eh, if I don't like something, if I have a gut instinct, I try to be open-minded, but if someone just, if I get a bad vibe from someone, I'm just like, nah, no. Like, even if like, it's like a super science-based dude that like says all the right shit, but just in my gut, I feel like something's off with that person. I'll just be like, nah, I know, I know better than that person. Like, so I'm almost have like this, like, you know, you don't want to be arrogant, but sometimes you're just like, you know what? I know better for me than anybody else. So, <laughs> so you kind of have to get into that spot a little bit because if you're not confident in your own abilities, which takes a little bit to get to, Sometimes they'll just like, oh, well, everybody, oh, he's an expert, so he knows better than me. And ever, like, how oh, well, I don't know my life. It's like, well, you you have your own unique experiences. You could have experiences that completely um, are counter to everything you would hear in the literature or whatever. You know, like trusting the science. It's like for me, it's like, no, this does, no, this is better for me because I know it's better just based off experience. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so yeah. Have, no. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. It's just like the, the balance between being arrogant and just not, but not being too like, you know, you don't want to be arrogant, but then you also don't want to just blindly follow authority figures. You know, you want to have a confidence in yourself that's well balanced. Yeah. It, and it, and it's tough to find that uh, sweet spot because so obviously like one end, one end of the spectrum would be uh, b being like this fanboy type and this tribal type who who's like really identifying with a method and the other would be being very open-minded but so open-minded that you're open-mindedly like program hopping all the time um and it's easy to to get into that as well I, that 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 was me actually uh for a long time with with training for example um and then with um well i, I had the other extreme as well so like i really really identified with the like the whole low carb like paleo kind of keto uh, side of things when I was younger, but it's, um, but, but it's tough. And because especially if you keep following people in the fitness world, because like I only always made the best progress, especially earlier on, when I was really prone to program hopping and stuff when I would just pick an approach and then I would like pretty much just like not follow anyone in the fitness world and I would actually just um, look at other things. So I, I would, yeah, I would listen to podcasts in, in other topics um, and like, like what, watch, watch movies and would just like distract myself from the whole fitness stuff. Cause I didn't want to confuse myself that yeah. that always worked great. But if you stay in it, it's tough. And then, yeah, like, yeah, it's actually funny that you say the, like the bit of arrogance um, and, and thinking that, you know, best, cause I was just thinking that if I could, um, if I could go back in time and have the same level of like uh, dogmatism that I had regarding the super slow, super low volume training stuff, um, if I could take that and just uh, like plant it over to like a moderate volume, like upper, lower, like bodybuilding splits, like, oh my gosh, I would have been so well off um, <laughs> like if I could have been so arrogant about that, that would have been great because like the arrogance would have prevented me from program hopping all the time mm. but it's actually a good method so it's and 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 you need that because it's almost like a protective mechanism and i think to an extent the whole tribal mentality 
is there for the same reason because it is tough like like what's going to prevent you from going crazy from all these conflicting voices it's like well if you really identify with something and then you just decide that everybody else is stupid that's gonna protect you to an extent from trying out everything and like never being consistent with anything mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent um I, yeah, I bought a, a very similar journey to you. Like I also identified with the low carb keto people for quite a while. Um, did you find like, uh, throughout my life, like whether it be in fitness or any other kind of field, when you kind of go, when you become dogmatic about something and then you come to the realization that you were wrong, how do you find that to be a very painful experience? Cause you like, I identify as this certain thing and then you're like oh i was wrong and then you have to like peel yourself away from that and it's like oh <laughs> hard pill to swallow i've been kind of doing some fucking bullshit for a while so like for me that was you know whether it be like specific nutrition principle that was off like low carb and shit like that that may not be the best for me and then uh you know, just other like lifestyle like politically even where i'm like say i'm like a very left-leaning guy and then i like learn some things and i'm like you know what uh actually i was wrong about this this that finance same thing i was wrong about this or like you just when you identify and you're so dogmatic about something then you have to peel yourself away it's like you're just like ripping apart layers of yourself and trying to put together a new person on the other side oh yeah yeah it's uh and it, it depends on <laughs> it depends on um what my previous belief was uh was manifesting in so if it was just me believing something then it, it's pretty easy for me to change my opinion if um in an argument where i said some pretty nasty things because i was completely sure that i was right then backpedaling from that is a bit harder um if i was like sitting there with a um, very serious look and like very wisely saying a bunch of things and people praise me for it and then I realized that I was wrong like that. That's tough. <laughs> and that's that is, um, yeah, like that, it's almost like a strategy around that, like how to titrate in like gradually the fact that, yeah, like I actually kind of realized that I was wrong. Um, it is it is tough. And I mean, yeah, like I'm not the biggest, like most influential with the biggest following person out there, but it, I realize it absolutely how tough that can be. So just, just as a side note, I completely understand how for someone like way bigger than me with way more followers and not only a lot of followers, but followers that follow the person because they think that he is almost always right. Like a Mike Isratel, let's say, or a Menno Hanselmans or whoever, uh, for them, it must be really, really rough uh, to, to back out from something like this. And, and you, you can tell, like you can see the reluctance when like I kind of have the feeling that like the person wants to say it, but but they just can't. Like it's just not um not not them specifically, but I have seen like even interviews where someone was like really cornered. And I'm almost like thinking that man, like the interviewer should give the person some space. Like you you cannot back out when you're like pressed to the wall this uh, <laughs> aggressively, you know, but it is it, it it is very tough and like i think that's why you need to um like if you're going to make like really powerful claims um when you're like not 100 percent sure that you're correct mm -hmm. then like you you either better be ready to like like stick to them and like be that person that others are like shitting on for not being willing to change their view or or maybe just don't do it just be a bit more humble <laughs> um but yeah it's uh, i definitely know the feeling of that cognitive dissonance like just like straining my brain from the inside like i i kind of know that like okay like i'm wrong but but no like i'm i need to look for like loopholes like like somehow i can convince myself that i'm still right um yeah it is it, it is rough for sure <laughs> yeah I, i'm lucky though because uh when I was really wrong about a lot of things, I didn't have, I didn't really like have a online platform of any kind. <laughs> mm. So that's, that's kind of tough too. If you're someone who has a, a platform and you're, and you're speaking a lot of things that are wrong. And then later you find out it kind of, it could tarnish you, tarnish your rep reputation as a, 
as an authority figure in the space because then you have to kind of go back on some things um yeah. and human beings hate being wrong like i'm pretty sure everybody has had an argument in their life where they secretly knew they were wrong but they're like no <laughs> <Yeah. I'm, I'm, laughs> you know that's a sign of obviously a sign of immaturity but it's kind of human nature just to like it just hurts hurts our ego too much to uh admit that we were full of shit on something yeah although i will say that i actually um i actually kind of enjoy in, in personal interactions i kind of like realizing that i'm wrong because i don't know about you but i can feel very resentful especially when i have these schizophrenic moments where i when i feel like i'm right and everybody else is wrong like like that can be a very frustrating feeling and like you men like i'm surrounded by idiots like when it, it typically <laughs> like happens when i see some like really stupid post or something and i see like everybody like being in a hundred percent agreement it's like so someone says something really stupid and then like the top comment is something like we need we need more, more people like you you're speaking <laughs> the truth and then that comment has like two thousand likes and then i'm like yeah i just want to Take these people, put them on a bridge, and like shoot them in the, a river. <laughs> and then, then realizing that ah, uh, okay, I'm I'm actually not understanding something here. That that's like a huge relief for me. Like it, it actually makes me feel really good. And mm -hmm. it, I also like, um, unless you do it all the time, and then like you can appear a bit stupid. I actually kind of like um, just saying like very candidly, like oh, fuck, like yeah yeah sorry i'm I'm wrong okay yeah I'm, I'm i'm sorry for everything i said because because actually people are really appreciative of that um mm -hmm. and like they don't ridicule you they are like oh yeah mate like no problem so that that can be a very wholesome moment when that happens <laughs> mm -hmm. no that makes sense that makes sense um i yeah i i feel like that too sometimes where usually for me just because like i have certain views that are not in alignment with a lot of people my age so sometimes mm. i'll like whether it be like political or philosophical i'll kind of be like oh usually it's like some like weird um like in canada there's a lot of people that are very like hardcore left-leaning and i'll just be like oh i'm such an outsider here <laughs> like i'll have like a an opinion yeah. that goes against them and i'll be like am i the one who's wrong and i'll have like that inner dialogue and i'll just be like yeah sometimes like you just sometimes you're just you're an, out, an outlier in certain regards you know like you think something that other people don't think and then you kind of have to be like okay well i guess you have to i don't know you definitely have to evaluate your position on things a lot and that can be tough um because at the end of the day people are we're all just a bunch of fucking you know monkeys living on this planet trying to figure it out we don't really you know no one has it all figured out so you gotta you got at the end of the day like you don't want to be schizophrenic but you also don't want to be like so ordered and so close minded and focused on one thing that you're not open to other people's perspective. So it's definitely a balance. I've definitely, yeah. I've definitely gone too extreme at various times where I, well, I'll, I'll be like, so like, like in anything, like I'll just take politics as an example where you're like, so dogmatic about one thing. You're like, no, this is fucking bullshit that this person thinks that and blah, blah, blah. Then eventually like, yeah, but I could make an argument for that other person. I think it's good to be mm -hmm. able to make arguments for the other side and be like, okay, well, they're right about this and that, but this is why I think they're wrong. And like, that's why, like in a lot of ways, like I always find myself at the center where I'm like, okay, well, they have some good points. This side has some good points. And this is my unique opinion in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and one thing I had to realize is that um, many times, Many times when someone has a has a view on something that you just you just cannot understand how someone can come to that conclusion and it's just like it baffles you and and you just cannot let it go like you know that okay like this wise thing would be to just okay whatever like their opinion my opinion not gonna probably not gonna convert them anyway so just move on but sometimes I just cannot let it go because like but but how like at least you just want to know like what brought him to that or her and many times what i realize is that actually what in large part what brought them to that idea or conclusion is that they just didn't think it over that much like they just don't care as much as i do like for me it's something i'm thinking about a lot so what you're hearing me saying is the 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 outcome of 
thinking about it for like dozens of hours. Mm -hmm. That person just like thought about it for five minutes and it's like, oh, whatever, like almost like a gut reaction or heard some someone else say something and just kind of regurgitates that without thinking it over. And it's like, for me hearing that, it's like, um, it's almost like, like it offends me because it's like, man, like, so you put in the same thinking power that I did and you came to that, like, like how, like, I want to know. And it's like, well, no, they didn't put it in. So that's why, and, and that's why it's good to have just complete side note, but good to have interactions in person and not only on the internet, because on the internet, like, especially in like comment sections, like all of this seems so much worse. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's often not as bad as it seems at first. Mm -hmm. I, I did want to get into a few. Uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about training and nutrition for a little bit here. We're kind of rolling up to yeah. the end of the podcast. I'm good um, if you are. So yeah, cool, man. Um, one thing I wanted to get into is uh, just kind of where you're at with your training and nutrition. One thing that one thing that I've been experimenting with lately is like, I know uh, a lot of people like to shit on intuitive eating, but I've been trying to not track calories and just focus on food choices. And then measuring my morning weight as a uh, a measurement of like whether I'm you know eating in a surplus or a deficit. I'm I'm kind of wondering like as you become more advanced and you've been training for so long, like what does your process look like today as far as like your diet and training? So um, so as far as the in intuitive eating thing goes, for me, it really it really comes down to. Um, basically just finding um a structure that that fits me and it accomplishes basically being able to be full at my meals uh which is that's not that hard because it basically just requires you to eat the right amount and to pick food choices that won't make you overeat um and to like like basically like some subjective stuff so i don't want to eat like a huge meal in the middle of the day that will like put me to sleep and and those things um and also a structure that will prevent me from falling prey to like things like boredom eating and stuff which i can definitely be prone to doing um and Same. just yeah <laughs> um managing my food environment you know so just not having a bunch of stuff in the in the house that that are just gonna tempt me so so really for me is the structure like like that's that's the thing that like got me in trouble here and there um because like i would have I would have the knowledge, like I would know like what, what foods are satiating, what foods aren't, but then I would have like a daily structure and like an eating structure or food environment issues, which would like make me overeat here and there. And like, like that, that's the stuff that would get me in trouble sometimes. Um, otherwise, like it's um, really is just a matter of having foods in the house so that like I don't need to like go to the store or something if I'm hungry and I want to eat something. Um, and, and then I will kind of, um, like there are some foods that I will just not have much of, uh, if I want to stay like really lean or if I'm cutting like, um, potatoes are great, but if I want to stay like really lean, um, it's, it's a little bit too energy dense for me as, as like a staple. So I will still have it just, just not at like, not, not every day probably, or not not with like multiple meals a day definitely um if i want to stay something like what i am now so it would be like kind of like high teens um then it's perfectly good um and and then also have like kind of like little strategies around like eating out um so for example do i make up for that earlier in the day with like lower calorie meals or will i not um will i have some more stringent rules about what I'm ordering and what I won't when I eat out or will I not. So, so a couple of these things I'm changing around right now. I'm like super, super lenient. Um, like now I actually decided that I should start eating more veggies and more fruits again. And to be honest, it's not because of body comp. It's because I'm just getting sick a little bit too often to my liking. Like it's yeah. I've just had this two month long cold almost that I just cannot get out of seemingly. So I'm just really fed up with that. So um, the, the diet stuff is, is just very, very, um, it's, it's very low stress and like super easy. And honestly, like um, 
that that's that's the thing that like i wish more people believe that like this whole intuitive eating thing is just so honestly the the biggest tip that i can give someone is to just start doing it at one point and just see, see what, what are the problematic areas for you and like uh it's very hard to like calculate it in advance, like exactly what issues you will run into or like like what is the right structure for you because your your body and your psychology will give you the right feedback. Like are you prone to overeating? Are you prone to undereating? Like you kind of know it that well before you actually try it. Mm-hmm. Um, so so that, that would be the diet stuff. Uh, if you have some follow-ups on that, like I'm, I'm happy to elaborate. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So one thing in particular that comes to mind is people that I talk to who have uh, been doing it for a long time. And uh, it's kind of controversial in the space because it's like we live in this very like calorie and macro focused era where it's like just, you know, if it fits your macros. But for me, I would say like this is an opinion I've had. I've kind of gone on and off about it, but I would say like food quality and food choice are way more important than people make them out to be. Like you'll have Mm -hmm. these influencers that'll say things like, well, as long as you're eating in a calorie deficit, you can have a croissant for breakfast and a donut for lunch and it doesn't matter. But it's like, yeah, but those foods are not going to keep you full. And they're also like micronutrient wise, you're getting nothing out of them, especially if you're eating in a deficit. You know, when you eat whole foods, a shit ton of veggies, fruits, meats, you know, just basic like micronutrient dense foods, especially when you're eating in a calorie deficit, when you have less of an, uh, uh, a less of a chance of hitting all your micronutrient needs, wouldn't you be way better off eating a ton of veggies instead of just eating, you know, ice cream and whey protein, like some, and I, I know I'm kind of straw manning the, if it fit, fits your <laughs> macros thing, I, I understand that, but like still, as someone who watches a lot of that content, I've as a kind of like if I were just to look at some of the way these people uh, present that information, like even Lane Norton, if I was to say I disagreed with him, it's like, sure, he'll say like eating whole foods. Um, I think that he actually strong man or straw man's the other side of the argument where he'll say things like, um, oh, well, well, what is an unprocessed food? It's like, yeah. You know, it's not, no, like I'll, 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 I'm an idiot. I'll answer that right now. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, there, there is a process of taking a vegetable, putting it in a bag. Okay. But it's a big difference between taking up a p- potato and turning it into like a hyper palatable potato chip. It's like, that's a, that's a strong, that's a straw man on his part where he says shit like that. And I'm actually pretty passionate about that. And I don't care if people are like, well, it's technically everything is processed. It's like, well, <laughs> if you eat whole food, if you eat whole foods, would you not argue that that solves a lot of problems? Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh yeah, when Lane Norton was doing that, like yeah, I wanted to strangle my computer <laughs> while watching him a few times because it was uh yeah, like so, so I hate it when people do that. Like, so so what so what's what's a whole food? Can can you define it to me? And then, then it's my, like, what I want to say is like, no, I cannot define it for you. Cause I know whatever I'm going to say, you're going to like find some flaws in that. So no, but, um, it's, yeah. Like, I, I think if it was being, was trying to like a little bit of a marketing move from his, his, yeah. his, his end. And also, uh, probably just wanted to make a point a little bit too much. Like someone uh, that worked with him, I met, he phrased it really well that like he's so anti-fed or was at the time that he created another fed out of that, you know? Yeah, maybe Uh, uh, maybe if I could just clarify one thing, like I'm not even like, I'm not trying to like come at Lane. Like I'm also just saying like that seems to, that seems to be like a mindset of a lot of people that are Mm -hmm. evidence-based or you know focused on the literature it's like well actually you can become healthier just by losing just a calorie deficit alone and losing weight will make you healthier i'm like yeah but for how long like like if you were to lose weight eating twinkies and whey protein and you were just to continue doing that and you just continued eating in that specific way when would the micronutrient deficiencies kick in how much would that affect your hormonal profiles and your overall mental health it's like anybody who's eaten like shit like objectively like eating garbage like pizza burger you know just like fast food garbage knows that that makes them feel mentally shitty like it like physically has an effect even if it's the same calories 
the same micro content or m- macro content, sorry, yeah. you still, it still has an effect. And I think like to think that, I think that food affects us in ways that we don't even fully understand. It's not just macros and calories. Like there's more to it than that. Cause like you don't feel the same eating certain foods, like eating junk foods. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, I, I think, um, yeah, it's more than just macros and also more than just micros probably like it's, um, yeah, I, I also don't think it would be the same to let's say eat a, a cucumber or eat like, I don't know, um, a tablespoon of like maltodextrin, which is like basically just like pure glucose yeah, plus a tablespoon of like a fiber supplement plus like, I don't know, like uh, mm. 20, 20 micrograms of uh, or 20 milligrams of vitamin C or whatever else is in cucumber. Like, like there are just things that maybe we don't even know what, what those are like little like phytonutrients. Yeah. 100%, 100% agree. Yeah. And, and it's, and it's, it's also, so it's, it is true that, you know, like being overweight, you know, it, it comes with, comes with a number of, of, uh, effects that will impact you in a negative way. And some of those can be so profound that if you lose weight, that might overpower a lot of other things, but mm-hmm. at the same time, um, you know, just so so they make this this example or or they explain it this way with obesity that okay you can be healthier than what you would think just by looking at the person even if you're obese so like yeah you can mm-hmm. be obese but you know if you're eating very healthfully which is like a little bit of a cash 22 because i mean that that is pretty hard to stay obese but okay um and if you're active and if you don't smoke and if you don't do a bunch of other things you can still be relatively healthy but it doesn't mean that you couldn't be healthier yeah if you were not obese but you know like the same goes this way like okay maybe you can be pretty healthy just by losing weight but it doesn't mean that you couldn't be even healthier if you if you actually ate well and yeah like it's it's probably a lot of the a lot of the consequences of obesity for example like those are bad because like at the end of the day, it's all like cellular stuff that happens here mm-hmm. and you can affect them profoundly by losing weight, but probably also by, you know, eating better and by exercising. And it's, um, and yeah, like just like now, like my body comp didn't suffer that much. Am I go, fuck, I hate it. <laughs> like, it was like itching my nose. I'm like, okay, so I could feel like I'm going to see it at any second. Um, so, so yeah, like my body comp didn't suffer that much, but like, uh, two, like, yeah, not the winter that was last year, but the one before that. So I was cutting for, through most of that, which meant that I was eating a lot of veggies and like, like salmon pretty much every day and a lot of like berries and, and things like that. And I wasn't sick once. Like I didn't even have like a minor cold last winter. I was sick the whole time. But it's the whole time, seriously. And like one one cold ended, I got another. And what what were you eating? Like what was the compare? Like the contrast? Was there a big difference in diet? I was yoloing it quite a bit. So mm. I was yeah, I was I was eating. Um, yeah, I wasn't even even eating a lot of veggies. Like um, I was eating a lot of like um, yeah, like like rice, pasta, things like a fat uh, fast food, like frozen like stuff but not not fast food like mcdonald's but you know i would buy yeah, like some like, frozen chicken mm-hmm. fingers and th- things like that so it, w- it was just like a crappy diet um and and that's unfortunately often what happens when um when when i'm not trying to stay too lean that i i don't have like a very clear incentive to eat you know veggies and things like that because i don't need to be satiated mm-hmm. um so 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 that's why you know um, I, I always try to sit, try to tell people that, you know, like eat, eat healthy, like the, even if you're not focusing on like getting lean or whatever, but like, like eat for health, like it, it's good to yeah. eat nutrient dense foods. Um, so yeah. yeah. Do you think? Yeah. So like, I want to go into that a little bit, you know, like the focus on health, like especially in the as a natural bodybuilder, if that's your thing, like I feel like a lot of people, one of the main reasons they stay natural is for their health, right? Like, would you, would you say so? Like the people that you've talked to that, like the main reason that they've, cause like, 
if we're not we, if we don't give a shit about health and we want to get jacked it's like well then why not just hop on gear right oh yeah yeah i mean yeah. it's go on like 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 it'd be like okay like if if gear existed but it had no health consequences whatsoever like it was actually healthy for you it's like i'd probably i'd take it <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah you know like if I, I mean like if there if it's a sport and you know there's the ethical decision to be made obviously but if you're just a dude trying to get jacked like a main reason like i don't do gear is because it, it it's a consequence to my health and i don't want to take that risk like i'm a health focused person and i want my my uh bodybuilding to be health focused like a health focused approach um and i feel yeah. like i feel like eating whole foods and eating healthy um, it solves a lot of problems because even like I listened to that podcast you did on bulking. Um, that was a really good podcast, by the way. I liked it a lot. No, um, and like eating whole foods, like it's really hard to over bulk and eating whole foods. Yeah, You know, you'll still get a surplus in. You don't like this idea that you need to eat pizza and ice cream to get your surplus in is ridiculous to me. Like you eat a little bit of extra rice and some put some olive oil on it if you want to or whatever like it's easy to get a surplus in but i feel like eating whole foods stops you from going overboard because uh there's actually a book called the dorito effect have you ever read that book Ooh, no but probably it's similar to like mindless eating I'm, uh, I'm not from i'm not sure uh i haven't read that book but in this dorito effect he talks about how certain foods like wire your palate so if you're eating like a bunch of processed like hyper palatable foods that you actually become more inclined to eat those foods and that when you eat whole foods they don't taste as good so it like mm. re rewires your palate so like even that as an argument for eating clean quote unquote um is really powerful because if you're eating these like whole foods and staying away from that shit that's going to kind of rewire your palate that you're way less likely to overeat you know, and and that's like you know how you're saying like, well, when you're cut, when you're bulking, you have less of a need to eat veggies from a satiate, uh, just being uh, less hungry. Um, yeah. But you should still be doing that while you're bulking to stop you from overeating on the bulk. Like either way, like eating whole foods is going to like solve both issues. Like, <laughs> you know. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I like it's, to get it's. Yeah, no, I mean, you, I completely agree with what you said, because it's um, what so what typically happens is that um, you start bulking, well, actually, better angle to approach from like, I always used to say that man, like my appetite is so big, that I, I could balloon up to like 300 pounds, even if I ate like just like veggies and chicken and whatever. And the thing is that yeah, that might be true for like a, like five days or something if you're coming out of a cut and your appetite is just through the roof or something. Yeah, like you're gonna do that and you're gonna you're gonna love stuffing your face even with like chicken and veggies after probably like two days, not so much. So then you at least need some like potatoes and like maybe some some fat with the meal so that like you have a better mouthful feel to it. Uh, and and then even that becomes just just unpleasant like you're so full all the time you know anything that you eat a certain amount of like eventually the the taste stimulation like just just lowers automatically so you need some something else to to keep making you want to eat it um and then eventually what what typically happens is that you just start introducing more and more stimulating taste and and that's basically the the desensitization of your palate and mm. that happens over the course of a single meal so so that's why you can be super full but dessert is always something there is room for right um and but it also happens like on a more like pro protracted time scale so you you just simply want to eat taste your foods um if you want to keep being in a surplus so so that's why um yeah, for those like like hardcore, like super dedicated, but bros that are bulking on like broccoli and and like maybe brown rice and and lean meats and stuff like that, like bulking will be really really tough at a certain point because mm -hmm. you just don't enjoy eating anymore, but you still do it because you feel like you need to. And I mean, I mean, I, 
even even now, for example, what was I? So I was sick and I was uh, drinking these uh, teas and I would just like sweeten it to taste. And like um, I would make them pretty damn sweet, actually. And uh, I had a, a monster today, uh, like a sugar free monster. Those are sweetened with artificial sweeteners and they are actually very sweet. But now after these teas, like they legit didn't feel sweet to me. Like it, it yeah. was kind of like almost sour more so than anything. So, I mean, that that's just the power of, 100%. you know, short term, like palate adaptation. Mm -hmm. Like maybe, so. may maybe artificial sweetener sweeteners aren't dangerous, but the mm -hmm. fact that you, you drink so many of them that like you go back to like, you know, some honey or something like that. And it's, it doesn't do the trick, yeah. you know? Or even just eating fruit. Like for me, like like I'll eat frozen fruit a lot as a snack. And mm -hmm. it's like to me, it tastes like candy because I'm like, oh, a mango frozen mango? Mm -mm, yum yum. <laughs> you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you're a guy who eats ice cream all the time, that might not do the trick. It's yeah. almost like, yeah, yeah, dude. It's like people who like watch porn and have like por porn <laughs> uh, addiction. Exactly what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're like fucking like, hitting the same. It's like, oh, then they're on to like the dirtier, dirtier. <laughs> dirtier shit because it doesn't get them off the same way same thing with food man like if you just stick with like the wholesome meals that maybe don't have that like super um like that crazy pleasure response but to me they do and like i don't I, when i eat, eat whole foods i do not eat brown rice broccoli and chicken breast that sounds fucking horrific yeah. horrific to me not that that's a terrible meal necessarily but that's not you know whole eggs milk steak chicken turkey whatever kind of meat pork for fuck's sakes like whatever you want to eat for meat um then you have a ton of veggies like potatoes like starchy veggies um rice uh what else for carbs what's like a good like whole food carb source oatmeal oatmeal boom you know like tons of stuff like honey in your oatmeal whatever like sweeten it with like nat natural sweeteners um like there's yeah, so much yeah, there's so many ways to make it amazing, like to taste super good. Like I love what I eat, you know, and you could still eat bread and stuff like that. Like that's still like if you're eating like sourdough bread or whole like whole wheat bread or whatever, like you can still have healthier versions of um, carbs and like whatever else. Yeah, and I, I, I so that is actually a, a blind spot that I used to have that I, I used to think really like not much of uh, like these recipes and whatever, because, you know, like I was... Um, I was always like I was dieting a lot for one. So my baseline was lower to begin with. And I was like, man, I just go to the kitchen. Like I chop up some veggies, throw it in a bowl and and like uh, have some protein source, like any kind of like low calorie sa sauce with it. And it's perfect. Um, but, you know, that's oh, that was I lost. Yeah, you lost me. Hmm. Oh, wait. Oh, well, what happened? Oh, uh, still... oh, I lost I'm you. here. Can you hear me? I can. Can you? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> that what, actually what happened? happened. I think just the uh, the connection went down a little bit there. This happened la on another podcast. You could just carry on. It just blanked out there for a sec. We're good. Oh, uh, okay. Is it recording like separately or tracks or is it... Uh uh i think it's doing both it's recording separately for both of us but also like as one oh, so we're okay. we're okay oh okay good fine. uh what so, were you saying something about whole foods uh oh blind spot about recipes yeah so like because i was i was thinking that man like like why are like why do people need to put together some fancy shit like just chop up some veggies and some protein source and you're good to go but the thing is that um I think that's a huge barrier for a lot of people when they're trying to get into a healthier lifestyle that they eat these things and it everything just feels like so bland like like is this how life is going to be from now on and it's it's just this very disheartening thought um and the thing is that you know the way I used to eat and I was fine with that honestly like I'm not a super picky eater but then you know my my wife made sometimes these like 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 legit like fitness meals so like like macro friendly whatever everything from like veggies and like not not even anything starchy in it and just by like messing around with some spices and like using oh, a yeah. bit bit a bit more fancy a bit fancier method than just throwing something in the microwave <laughs> um like it tasted like 
uh, I was thinking that, man, if I gave this to anyone, nobody would say that this would be an unsustainable lifestyle because it's fucking delicious. 100%. So uh, the only problem is that that's it takes time to do it. And it's not so from non-healthy stuff, you can buy anything like, you know, a package, you know, when you just like um, um, freeze it at home. From this kind of stuff, you need to make it for yourself. It takes some time, and you also need some cooking skills, you know, which which a lot of people don't have. So that that's a problem. But um, yeah, I'm realizing now how big of a piece this can be for a lot of people. You know, yeah, I would I would argue that like it's it's your success. It's mandatory that you learn how to cook if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to be successful at this, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and and yeah, sure. There's a time commitment, but like do you do you want to be in amazing shape well there's a time commitment with hitting the gym why why would the time commitment aspect not carry over into nutrition of course there's going to be a time commitment like if you want to look like the average person sure live like them buy buy cheap easily available foods like sure go ahead but you're going to look like the average person and the average person's out of shape like at, at best dad bought at worst morbidly obese it's like if you want to be better than that you're going to need to be better in the in the kitchen right you're gonna need to learn how to cook you're gonna need to fucking make your own meals like back in the day we used to have to hunt <laughs> we used to have to farm <laughs> you know <laughs> like like hours yeah. and hours of the day was dedicated to acquiring food now you get to walk into a grocery store you know get your single ingredient foods then you got to go home and like it doesn't take it doesn't take that much man like you just yeah. gotta like put in a bit of effort and i understand not everybody has the same lifestyle, but they can't, or the same uh, time to spend on certain things. Like, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, but like, okay, then like, stop playing video games, stop watching Netflix, stop doing other things that you that don't benefit your goals. Like, and you don't have to be like, if you don't want to achieve like a great physique, you don't have to put in the work. But if you wanna, if you wanna achieve the physique, you're gonna have to uh, put effort in, right? Yeah, and it's it's um. It, it's unfortunately also the um, like like in some cases you realize just how big of a how big of an uphill battle you're gonna have with some people in in trying to help them because they would need like a, like a restructuring of ba basically everything like when you start peeling back the layers so like the first thing is okay like these should be your calories well okay so this is my challenge like I'm just freaking this is horrible. Like I cannot live like this. I would rather rather stay fat. It's like, well, but you can have these meals. It's like, oh, well, I have no idea how to cook. It's like, well, but it's not that hard. This is how you cook. It's like, well, okay, but when am I gonna learn that? Like I work from this whatever mm -hmm. until like eight, and it's like, well, but do you watch Netflix after that? It's like, yeah, man, but like, I, like I, I need to crash on the couch at least a little bit after I come home from work. It's yeah. like. Well, yeah, okay. So, like, maybe this like ten or twelve hour workday that you have every day is a problem. So, like, eventually you're just like, well, man, I don't know, man. Like, have you heard of semaglutide? You know, <laughs> or like uh, some of these like appetite suppressing drugs? Like, oh, shit, point, yeah. like you're out of out of uh, yeah out of things to, to tell them, and and it's 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 really rough. Um, but uh, yeah, let's be honest, that's not most people. But a good number of them, so like, gotta be mm -hmm. mindful of that. Yeah. No, what I no what that kind of makes me think of is, uh, so, you know, you're talking about like restructuring someone's whole life to achieve a goal, right? Like when it comes to like weight loss or whatever. Um, think about the people, like you know, when people say like ninety nine percent of diets fail or ninety five percent of diets fail, it's because these people will like go on this like intense um diet that they can't sustain they'll lose a bunch of weight and then they just rebound right back to where they were at or even worse mm. that, that kind of like a metaphor or i guess an analogy i'll use is you know when people talk about like hey we need to redistribute wealth because society is unequal okay but they don't know like if you know anything about economics just basic economics if you're poor Let's just say you're poor and I'm I'm wealthy, okay? If if we distributed my wealth so that we become the same, chances are you're going to become poor again and I'm going to become wealthy again. <laughs> yeah. Because the uh you know, like just in general in society, like if someone's in poverty, someone's wealthy, um 
on average, those things are, they're going to go right back to where it was at after like five or 10 years, because the, the success, my success, um, the way my lifestyle was structured, my mindset created that for me. It's the same thing with diet. It's like, if you go on some crazy crash diet and you like achieve your, it's a little different with diet, but like, if you achieve that and you like lose the weight, chances are though, you're going to go right back to those same lifestyle habits that created that problem in the first place. Right. And I'm, you know, like if you, if you force fed me and made me 300 pounds, I'm probably, it's probably going to be a lot easier for me to get back to my healthy weight versus someone who is 300 pounds regularly. You like diet, you forced him to diet down to like 180. Chances are you let him back out into the world after like, mm -hmm. you know, starving him he's probably going to go back to that just based off his he never that person never had the lifestyle in place like they never actually built the good habits does that make sense am i yeah. am, I, am i off there <laughs> no, no no yeah it's um yeah it's uh i think i heard Mano Hanselmans describe this as equilibrium basically like you're basically the, like there's a blueprint of what leads to what outcome and based on everything that you do like how often you train what your diet is like the food like your shopping yeah. habits it, it's inevitably going to make you gravitate towards a certain body comp and if you don't know how to create lasting changes then those lifestyle factors that made you fat in the first place they're like they're mercilessly gonna make you fat again yeah and and it's um and you know it's it's interesting because I actually uh, I, I said this to my wife one time that you know her and like a like a lot of people like most people I know like they like to go on these like diet campaign like efforts almost so like yeah they need to get ready for something and they they will lose a given amount of weight um, like usually it's not like a, a, a drastic amount. So it's not like going from 300 pounds to 170. So it's not like that, but it's, you know, maybe five, seven, eight, ten 10 kilos, something like that. So like up to like 22 pounds, something like that. But, um, you know, they have zero plan for the life afterwards. So like most of them will regain it really quickly. And, so I said it a lot to my wife, like, like, like I, I don't understand, like, like, what's the thought process here? Or that do they even have a thought process? And like, at one point, she said, like, yeah, well, no, to be honest, I don't think there is any plan for what's going to happen after. And I was like, but what's the, like, you're going to lose the weight. And then you're like, you're just like, well, it's going to be in some way afterwards, or like, like, what are you thinking? It's like, well, yeah, more or less. And it's like, but don't you see that you just regain it all the time? And she was like, well, yeah. And, and, and she's like, well, but, but is, is it that bad of a thing? And, and it was very interesting that she said that because, um, because to me, it was obvious that it's that bad. But the thing is that for some people, maybe it's not, you know, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, maybe like, like a lot of people I know, they are like a little bit overweight, but not by much, you know, so it's not like they're morbidly obese or something. Like a little bit of extra pudge, but they're like they're fully confident in the like the way they are. Like they still go out, like they still think of themselves as like very attractive or whatever. So like to them, like it's they they just don't care enough. Um, when when it is really bad, it's you know someone who who is actually hating their body like all the time, and like they all, all, almost like need to create this uh, new personality for themselves, which is like congruent with looking the way they are because like a person like that would not care um so like you know like the, the person who was never overly funny but becomes like the funny chubby guy you know like the um we, like those are very lovely people usually but maybe <laughs> some of them are not happy being that way you know yeah so so that's when it's an issue no that makes so. sense man cool buddy well that might that might be a good place to wrap this up we're at the uh almost at the two hour mark here it's the longest podcast sure. longest podcast i've had in a while <laughs> oh i'm honored i managed to finish on a very nice note like shitting <laughs> on the funny chubby people <laughs> no. cool man well if you just want to let people know where they can find you that'd be great yeah absolutely so uh on youtube ssd able 
and uh so just ssd a b e l but i i guess that's straightforward and on uh yeah i have a website that's ssdable.com and then on instagram if it's still up when you're listening to that it's uh, able fit stuff it's not not the most amazing page but sometimes i post there sounds good man well i appreciate you coming on yeah thanks for the opportunity i enjoyed it